what we are talking about now is like a second industrial revolution, but the product this time will not be textiles or machines or vehicles or even weapons. The product this time will be humans themselves. We are basically learning to produce bodies and minds. Bodies and minds are going to be, the, I think, the two main products of the next wave. Once you know how to produce bodies and brains and minds, so cheap labor in Africa or South Asia or wherever, it, it simply counts for nothing. And again, I think that the biggest question, in, in, maybe in economics and politics of the coming decades, will be what to do with all these useless people. I don't think we have an economic model to, for that. My best guess, which is just a guess, is that uh, food will not be a problem. Uh, with th that kind of technology, you will be able to produce food for, to feed everybody. The problem is more uh, boredom and how, what to do with them and how will they find some sense of meaning in life when they are basically meaningless, worthless. My best guess at present is a combination of drugs and computer games. Wow. Oh, how uh, very frank of him. That, of course, is Klaus Schwab's advisor to the World Economic Forum, someone that a lot of billionaire technocrats look up to saying the quiet part out loud. And I think it's fair to say they have a lot more planned for you than just video games. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukradowski here of WeAreChange.org. And there is a lot of things, especially to talk about in today's media landscape, that, of course, is meant to pacify you into the fourth industrial revolution, all through, of course, a great reset, which many technocrats plan to build back better from. We're going to be talking about that, as well as all the latest crazy news happening all around the world in this independent media broadcast. But just as a reminder, the man that you just heard is Yawel Noera Harari, literally one of the thought leaders for the World Economic Forum, a globalist visionary whose uh, comments, I think, are worth paying attention to. Now, there's so much news, we're just going to jump right into it. And in related tech billionaire news, today we found out that Elon Musk will not be joining the board of directors on Twitter. This has created the price of Twitter to go up dramatically, and a lot of people speculating what's what's really going on here. Is, is Elon just bored? Is he not going to do anything further from here? Or is this a hostile takeover of the company, which would be uh, absolutely pretty exciting. The current CEO of Twitter, Parag Agarwal, released a statement surrounding this news, saying that this was the best path for everyone involved here, including the shareholders. As, of course, a lot of people are commenting to this, that Elon Musk, if he would have joined the board, would have been limited to only owning 15% of Twitter stock and that he would have been, quote, caged in. Now, Parag did not mention why Musk is not joining the board, and there's reports of him saying that there's going to be some distractions ahead, and you can't say things are, are boring at, at Twitter, as Elon Musk has tweeted a poll asking people if they want to get rid of the W in Twitter, has talked about implementing payments on Twitter in Dogecoin, and even floated the idea of using Twitter HQ in San Francisco as a homeless shelter since, of course, people are predominantly working from home. And whether it's a troll or whether it's serious or whether it's just confusion, whatever it is, we still have to remember here that a lot of people are putting their hopes into Elon Musk and Twitter since, of course, the platform routinely censors people for political purposes and what looks like the benefit of many corporate interests as just moments ago, Judia Broderick, a major accuser of Bill Clinton, was just suspended from the platform, making a post about a forced medical procedure that, of course, a lot of people were extorted recently to take. Miss Broadwick criticized that. For that, she had her speech taken away. This, as we're finding out today, that the mayor of New York City, who took this procedure three times just tested positive for the sickness that the procedure was supposedly supposed to prevent as the mayor of New York City just canceled his Sunday in-person events as of course he has been jumping around the city. 
at private exclusive parties and galas while, of course, maskless as he just extended the mask mandates in New York City for children under the age of five. All of this as there's some reports that he knew he was exposed to the sickness and just continued to go to parties and festivals as, of course, the once promised man of the people is now in reality a self-centered gala party celebritard worshiper who is loving his life of fame and luxury while his constituents suffer more than they ever have before. New York City, not a pleasant place to be in right now because of, you know, the government controlling every aspect of your life, massive crime, somewhere that I moved out to, to of course be here in wonderful, amazing, beautiful Florida, that I absolutely do not regret moving to another place you really don't want to be in is china where we are getting an incredible amount of crazy videos coming from specifically in shanghai we're going to be showing you those videos and talking about what is really going on here especially with the latest footage coming from their detention facilities, which a lot of people have compared to literal dog kennels. As it seems like the Chinese government is literally trying to train people to stay in their pods, as of course there's massive food insecurity, massive amounts of food wasted by, of course, top-down centralized control. We're going to be talking about that plus a lot more, all exclusively on LukeUncensored.com, as, of course, there's some aspects of this story that we cannot mention on this particular broadcast. We're going to be talking about that. LocalFats.com, it's, it's, it's not what you think, but we're going to be talking about health, wealth, living your best life, how to do that, how to achieve that, all exclusively on a big, broader conversation, which is going to happen later on today, on LukeUncensored.com. You could join it just by clicking the link down in the description below and finding out more. Also today, we just launched exclusive merchandise that is only available on LukeUncensored.com. If you have a membership, it's going to pay off just for the t-shirts that you could buy at a reduced cost with exclusive designs only available to people who sign up. We just launched two new t-shirts, one for the general public, one only for members. One, I believe, is $25. One is $15. You save $10 all just by joining our membership private area, which sustains independent media, gives you three master classes and exclusive conversations and videos almost every single day. Click right now in the description and sign up right now. And I will see you there later on today. Now, I, I think it's fair to say that a lot of the normies, the Kyles and Karens, are starting to realize that the Biden administration is just an absolute, complete failure. Now, that, of course, is the public PR perspective of it. I wouldn't say it's a failure. I would say it's a success for a lot of other individuals, especially the billionaires, the technocrats, the Klaus Schwab's, the World Economic Forum. People are useless, meaningless people that need to be pacified by video games and drugs. People like Yaval here, who, of course, a part of the corporate billionaire banking class are doing better than ever. Look at the majority of people suffering, losing their money, losing their wealth. Their savings are literally being evaporated. There's one of the largest taxes happening right now on the American people, and they're not even realizing it. As, of course, inflation is one of the biggest taxes levied against the general public. And the taxes are so high that people are having a very hard time existing, especially in the third world. But even here in the United States, all of, all of this, as this Biden administration has been mirrored in absolute controversy, scandal, corruption accusations that the corporate media has covered up and hid from the general public. And we're not just talking about the Hunter Biden laptop. And with these huge consequences, this huge financial calamity being almost engineered by the government, what's the Biden administration focusing on during these very difficult times? Well making you defenseless and, of course, trying to take away your ability to be able to have tools of self-defense, as, of course, the Biden administration is soon going to be announcing new restrictions on, of course, the Second Amendment. Now, a lot of this is being done in disguise of, of protecting and helping the general public, as, of course, here in the United States, the, the places, the cities, the states with some of the strictest laws against the Second Amendment are dealing with the most amount of crime. We do have to understand, on the backdrop of everything that happened within the last two years, a lot of people aren't buying this. The government doesn't care about your health and, and safety. If they did, they would talk about 
being healthy and exercise. They would actually do something against highly processed GMO vegetable and seed oil produced foods. They would help provide you insulin shots rather than rushed experimental unknown procedures that we don't know the long-term consequences of. They would prioritize your well-being over, of course, the corporate profits of their friends, but, but they haven't. So if the Biden administration is not really looking out for your health and safety, what are they doing? Well, I think it's very fair to say that these extensive, bewildering, nonsensical policies that they are implementing against the Second Amendment of the United States is purely about trying to control the general public. This is not about your safety. This is about you being controlled by this administration, by this government, and they do not want you to have the ability to be able to defend yourself. The United States doesn't care about gun safety. They're the number one arms exporter on the world stage by any measure. The United States is responsible for 37% of all exports of major conventional weapons worldwide. And as we know from the, the receipts, especially from the, the, the Obama administration's Fast and Furious, which Joe Biden was vice president for, we know that a lot of these weapons usually end up in some of the worst criminals' hands, all with, of course, severe consequences. This, as the United States, is still helping conducting a war on Yemen, creating one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world, with millions of innocent human beings and children starving because of a defunct, insane geopolitical foreign policy that is placating Saudi Arabia and their Sunni Wahhabist Al-Qaeda allies inside of Yemen. The United States right now is taking your tax dollars and literally helping starve hundreds of thousands of children all to help al-Qaeda and other Sunni Wahhabist inside of Yemen. That's not a joke. That's not a stretch of the imagination. This is literally even admitted by the Associated Press. Mainline corporate media even agrees with this statement. And this is the same administration saying, hey, 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 while we do all this, you can't defend yourself. We're going to put more restrictions, more controls on you having the ability to protect yourself and your family. And of course, the, the corporate media like MSNBC is painting this as he's going to get tough on buzzwords that, are, that of course, are, are absolutely just, just meaningless. A firearm is, 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 is just like any other tool out there, just like a fork. It could be used to shovel GMO, vegetable and seed oil processed goods into your mouth hole and kill you and, and hurt you, or it could be used for highly nutritious organ meat that, of course, Bill Gates is deathly afraid of you eating. It can make you healthy or it can make you fat. The choice is yours, but to limit the tools has nothing to do about safety, has nothing to do about security, and has everything to do with top-down centralized control of your existence on this planet. There's a lot of things that if there even was an ideal productive government that cared about human beings, that they could be doing initiatives and efforts that help people become healthy, self-reliant, independent, but they don't. They do almost the exact opposite of that, as, of course, we're facing some very serious problems and consequences coming our way very soon. Those problems and consequences are not just a result of the geopolitical conflict happening within Europe, but, of course, that is making the situation worse as well, as the United States also has been dumping a lot of firearms and weapons inside of Ukraine, just like they did in Syria. And we all have seen how that worked out at the end of the day. And with tensions heating up inside of Europe, we can only expect the situation to get worse on the world stage when it comes to a lot of the financial, food, and global supply chain issues, which are only being exacerbated by these current state of affairs inside of Ukraine. This, as we're finding out today, that Finland is set to become a member of NATO as early as this summer, which, of course, would be another very significant escalation against Russia, as, of course, Finland borders Russia. And with Finland no longer becoming neutral and joining the NATO alliance, which Vladimir Putin believes wants to invade and take over Russia, right on Russia's border, significantly, most likely, will be met by a lot of resistance by the Russians. And whether it's cyber war, hot war, physical war, we have to understand that there are Russian officials that are coming out and saying 
that Finland faces the destruction of their country if they do this. There have been very significant threats made by Russia against Finland. Russia also is in a geopolitical fight with Japan over contested island territory, which is integral and important for them to be able to have access to the Sea of Japan and to the Pacific Ocean. The Japanese also have been making very strong statements threatening a lot of actions against the island chain that the Russians have taken over in 1945 and placed their citizens to live in. Currently, there are a lot of Russian and even some Ukrainian people that have been settled into this territory for decades. Japan wants it to be theirs, and if it does become theirs, Russia would lose access to the Pacific Ocean, and it looks like Russia is becoming more encircled by the day and, of course, threatened. What usually happens in nature when an animal is threatened? Well, they usually lash out, and of course, geopolitically on the world stage, I do believe this is something worth paying attention to, as there will be, according to my own personal perspective, a lot of significant ramifications from these very big, significant moves. Finland also is is answering back against Russia, with some politicians there threatening conflict with them, saying that the Russians would be obliterated if they again try to invade their country, as of course, historically, Russia does not have a lot of military success in that particular region. It also looks like China is becoming more involved as their country just made a, quote, semi-secret delivery of advanced air defense systems to Serbia. Why are they, they doing this with Serbia being a major ally of Russia? What's up with the secrecy? What's going on here? And I think it's very fair to say that we're seeing a clash between the East and the West as this conflict is heating up, escalating, and endangering a lot of us. But hey, the number one priority is keeping you defenseless, which is absolutely crazy. I was going to say something else, family-friendly show, but that is just my perspective, my opinion. I could be wrong, and if you think I am wrong, let me know why in the comment section below. I always appreciate your constructive criticism. I always appreciate just being able to have this conversation and you listening to me all the way up until the end of this video. Again, I'm doing another video later on today, LukeUncensored.com. I hope to see you there right after this. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, and this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for a lot more here on We are change.org.